Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of March. This month we have an exalted Mars in our skies and that's really very significant because in the middle of the month the nodes are going to shift and Rahu the North Node is going to shift into Aries and Aries is ruled by Mars. So to have the ruler of the house exalted is really quite important. Now if you haven't yet seen your Rahu Ketu access report, take a look at this video here and you will be able to see how this Rahu Ketu access shift is going to impact you. This is really big. It's going to impact you over a year and a half. So that is definitely a video that you won't want to miss out on. But in this month's video, we are going to take a look at Mars. And I remember last month, I placed a bit more emphasis on Venus. I talked about the fact that Mars and Venus would be conjunct. I said that they are walking the night skies together. And I also mentioned that they will be within a degree of each other from about, I think wasn't it mid-Feb to about mid-March. They are definitely really close to each other. And this is quite extraordinary that they are going to be within a degree of each other for so long. The way I interpreted that last month is that there could be more arguments you know, there, there could be tensions, there could be difficulties. And if we take a look at the news, we do see that that is happening. The best example of that, of course, is the tension between Russia and Ukraine. Now, we should keep an eye on this and keep watching this. If we observe that that tension subsides mid-March onwards, then we know that Mars and Venus being so tightly conjunct has had a real impact and influence over that situation. When we have two planets so tightly conjunct within a degree of each other, that is known as planetary war. And I did mention that last month. I think it was in one of the mini reports. I mentioned the fact that, you know, there's Yudbala, there's planetary war happening in the sky. So we do have that going on and that is ongoing until mid-March. We are going to have these two tightly conjunct so there is definitely some tension uh, in the sky at the moment. This month, I'm not doing too much of a news matchup. And do you know, I think one of the reasons for this is that Mars energy, Mars is pretty brief with words. You know, where Venus might have hundreds of words to say, Mars will have a few words but he wants to get on and he wants to do things. You know, he, he, Mars is a, a planet of few words, I'm discovering. So I've just touched briefly on the Russia and Ukraine situation, but I haven't really felt too inspired to jam pack uh, this episode with too much news matchup. But there are a couple of things I do want to say. One was that I put out a video recently about the potential changes to the monetary system. And there were some great comments on there. I'm yet to go there and have a look at the latest comments, actually. I understand that there are some more comments and I, I wanna go in there and um, you know put, put some comments or likes or whatever. I will be doing that. But um, somebody did write briefly that, hey, you might want to change your analysis based on some of the information that's being shared in the comments section. And I just wanted to touch on that and to say, well, actually, I don't need to uh, update the predictions that I made in that video. The reason being, I'm using the extreme outer planets there. So I'm looking at Saturn, I'm looking at Neptune and Uranus, and the kind of transits and the pattern that I was identifying and the things that I was seeing there, those don't come around and happen too often. And I think one of the points I should have made a little bit more clear in that video was to say that the pattern that I identified, you know, with 1971, and so we had 1933, 1944, I think it was, and 1971, you take a look at those years, they're quite spread out, aren't they? Now, what I've identified is that we've got three similar time windows coming in the space of, you know, about, about 10 years. So that's all that I was identifying there. I wasn't particularly saying 
what's going to be happening to the monetary system or how exactly that was going to play out. I was just pointing out the windows where something really can happen and something quite big can happen. It's kind of like identifying which waves to catch. You know, like if you were redesigning a monetary system, well, these windows are particularly good. So that's pretty much all I was doing there. But the other thing I also wanted to say was that one of you had shared a brilliant link to a video by Ray Dalio. It was Ray Dalio and Lex Friedman. And I want to thank the viewer so much for that video. And I'm going to share that in uh, the comments of this video below. I'm going to share a link to both the money video in case you missed it. And I'll share a link as well to this video by Ray Dalio. I watched the whole thing. I thought it was excellent. And it's just really good to, you know, and I think I even, I think I did plug in Ray Dalio's chart details just to see what was going on there. And yeah, he's got a lot of good grounded energy and it's, it's just nice to listen to people like that, uh, you know, and get as many views on the changes in our world as possible. And definitely Ray Dalio is a top name in finance at the moment. I've had a few people tell me, you've got to read his book, Principles. I haven't read it yet, but I don't know if I'll get around to it. I have too many astrology books to look at, but um, thank you to my viewer who shared that. I'm gonna share it more broadly now. So I think we are in a good place, guys, to just begin. By the way, did I mention the Mars Exalted dates? The dates are 27 Feb to 8 April 2022. So that's when Mars is going to be exalted. And yeah, I think we're good to begin. This is a very brief uh, intro this time, but it's Mars energy, you know. Oh, and I also wanted to say last month we had one of the lovely viewers in last month's comments brilliantly picked up the fact that I shared two quotes about relationships, didn't I? I think, and I was focusing more on female energy because Venus was strong in Sagittarius. Venus was the stronger of the two. Okay, now we've got Mars exalted and Venus is in Capricorn, right? So let me just double check that. But it's so interesting. Last month, Venus was the more... Uh, let's have a look here. I just want to, yes, yes, it is Venus in Capricorn. I mean, look, she's not so powerful there. It's, it's masculine energy this month that's really strong and exciting. And last month, I focused, I focused more on the feminine energy. One of you had brilliantly said, um, hey, those two quotes you shared, they were both for the female energy. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Thank you, viewer, for calling me out. And I knew that I'd have a chance to redress the balance because this month is all meant to be about masculine energy. Okay, it's it's exalted Mars. It's, you know, don't need to say much. Just need to get on and do stuff, isn't it? That's the masculine energy. So why don't we get on and, and just do stuff? Why don't we get on and do these mini reports? So Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we've got Mars Exalted all month in your 10th house. This is incredible, right? So this is all about career. You should have some really good energy to put into your career this month. One tip here, though, is to be careful of how you speak to seniors at work. This was something that, you know, my father used to tell me when I was doing a corporate thing and working for managers and all that, he would always say, never go above the heads of like, if you've got people above you, don't ever go above them. Always, he was like, always, you know, stay humble, stay within your area. And that is good advice when you're in a corporate situation. It really is. So if you are in that situation, take care this month because you might have this extra energy and you might really want to go for it on certain things, but just just be careful there. Um, I've got the note here in April, you're going to have opportunities for promotion. And the reason for that is because Mars is going to be transiting your 11th house. That's very powerful. That's brilliant for getting promotions, for taking that next step up in your career, for bringing in money, all that kind of thing. So that's going to be April for you. So I feel like you are laying the groundwork 
for some very near-term growth right now. Okay, so that's the potential of this exalted Mars energy. Now on the 3rd of March, we have an Aquarius new moon in Satta Bishak, 11th house. So this is a brilliant time to plant seeds for healing, uh, healing within your friendships, healing to do with your siblings. This is also a time to plant seeds for new opportunities, for abundance, okay? If you want to expand your life, if you want to expand your career, it's a great time to plant seeds. Just today I was watching Eckhart Tolle speak about conscious manifestation and he said anytime you want to manifest something, anytime you want to plant a seed or make a wish or any of that, he says do that but then totally let it go, completely let it go and it's kind of like planting the seed, you don't want to keep digging it up or checking on it or any of that, just put your order in to the universe and let go. So try that this month, new moon, you've got a great opportunity to try a little bit of manifestation, you know, this is a manifestation type technique where you put in your order, so to speak, on the 3rd of March. Hopefully you're watching this before the 3rd of March and then let it go. Just let the universe bring it to you and see what happens. Now on the 18th of March, we've got a Virgo full moon, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your sixth house. So this is a great time to reflect on your material life actually. To just look around your life, especially your career as well, what you've materialized so far, and just see, is this where I want it to be? You know, and, and that's it. This is this is the full moon. You're you're seeing the fullness of something. Okay, and this will help you strategize in the weeks and months ahead. So it's a really good time on the 18th of March. Survey surveying your kingdom. It's a little bit like that. But Aries, this is really great energy, especially when it comes to your career. So I'm really excited for your month ahead. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome <coughs> Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, you've got Mars exalted all month in your ninth house. Okay, this is good. This is energy to learn, to pick up new skills, to definitely to pick up new skills that are going to help you in your career. Okay, so if you want to expand your knowledge base, if there's something you need to study up on, I've always got things I need to study up on with astrology. There is always something to learn. So yeah, this is a great month. If you have spare energy, if you're really feeling this exalted Mars energy in a big way that you have spare energy, spend that spare energy training up, skilling up, you know, expanding your knowledge base. I have the note here, be very careful how you speak to seniors at work. Be very careful about run-ins with authority. Okay, we do have a bit of planetary war going on at the moment and I know here in Australia there are yes, plenty of opportunities actually for people to have run-ins with authority because of course authority figures are clamping down, trying to enforce rules, trying to bring new rules at the moment so we all have to be careful with that. I've got in brackets here not the best month to protest you know um, if that's something you're doing. You might also discover that this energy it, it could also so either you're going to have spare energy that that's how this is with Mars it can either be very energizing or it can drain you and this could potentially with this ninth house transit pose some minor health challenges. You might find that you have muscular aches, pains, inflammation, that kind of thing. Light yoga will relieve all of that or just some stretching before you sleep. One of the things I've been doing is yoga with Adrian. I love yoga with Adrian, and I have been doing her nightly um, bedtime yoga. It is so good. It's so easy to do. And it's just, you can choose like, I think she has a 10 minute one and a 20 minute one. I've been doing the 20 minute one, it's so good. 
So if that's something, you know, that's a nice easy way to just incorporate some light exercise into your day. On the 3rd of March, we've got an Aquarius new moon, Sat the Bishak, that's happening in your 10th house. So you've got the ability here to plant seeds regarding expansion in your career. What is it that you'd love to do in your career? Do you have some kind of dream job or dream profession that you'd love to do? And I know at the moment I'm actually working with one of you on this very topic. You're looking at potentially you know, taking up some higher education, getting a qualification and, and going for this dream that you had sometime before. And yes, that's the kind of thing that you can do on the 3rd of March with this Aquarius new moon. For you especially Taurus, you can plant seeds around what it is that you'd really love to do. Perhaps it's a new dream, but it might even be reviving an old dream. Perhaps something you wanted to do some years ago, but you know, for one reason or another, you were never able to. Maybe, maybe you were able to plant a seed now to light up that path again. I've got the note here, a great time to visualize yourself in your future career 10 years from now. What would you love to be doing? Okay, so you could plant a seed for that on the 3rd of March. Now, and also, don't worry if you missed it, okay? Don't worry if you're watching this on like the 5th of March or even if you're watching this on the 10th of March, it doesn't matter, okay? Just because time is an illusion anyway. <laughs> That's a whole other video, but you know, just think about the 3rd of March, plant your seed, okay? Whenever you're watching this is when this is significant. So 3rd of March, it doesn't matter if you're watching it afterwards. Now the 18th of March, Virgo full moon, Uttra Falguni, Nakshatra, this is happening in your fifth house. So this is a really good time to reflect on your creative output in a very practical way. What is it that you love to create? This could be a hobby. This could be part of your profession. But when you're creative, what do you do? How do you manifest that creative energy that you have within? Are you manifesting it? Okay, so this is 18th of March is a full moon. This is just a good time to reflect. You don't have to do anything, but just assess, just see where am I creatively? Am I giving what I came to this earth to give? Okay, you will know what that means. It's so different for everybody. Everyone's creativity is vastly different. You know, some of you are singers, some of you are finance people, some of you are, you know, running a YouTube channel. Okay, like there's all kinds of ways of being creative these days. So this is just 18th March, Virgo full moon, just a really great time to be really practical and assess your creativity to date. And are you where you want to be? And you know, where would you like to go? You can strategize a bit. You can, you can think about that. Reflect on where you might like to take your creativity or where you would like your creativity to take you, for example. But Taurus this is looking like a pretty good month and I'm wishing you well. And I'm gonna welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now Mars is exalted all month in your eighth house. This is pretty big energy. And you might actually wanna take it a bit easy health-wise, okay? Mars transiting the eighth, this transit tends to be a bit tough on the health. So please be careful. If you feel like you don't have the energy to do something, then heed that, okay? Rest, don't pile yourself up with far too much work, uh, you know, and I hope this is gelling well with your, well, factor this in, this is just for this month. And then if you've just watched your Rahu Ketu Axis video and I said something very different, but that's a year and a half. So know that we're dealing with different time frames here, but definitely this month, don't push it is the main message. Um, travel with close friends and family could be okay, like a little getaway somewhere, something like that, but take extra care, okay? this is important that you if you are going to travel you know you don't rush and you take a lot of care um, I've got the note here a small retreat somewhere could be really restorative now on the 3rd of March we have an Aquarius new moon in Sat the Bishak 
that's happening in your ninth house. So this is a great time to plant seeds regarding your intellect, regarding your skill set, regarding what it is that you know and what it is that you would love to know. You know, I just watched, um, one of you shared with me a link to watch Ray Dalio and Lex Friedman. And I mentioned that in the introduction to this video. And it was so incredible. These people are so knowledgeable. Like I don't know that much about finance, but yeah, some people, they, they know so many things. So we've always got the ability to expand our intellect. We've always got the ability to learn about a new field, to learn about something else. And by learning about that, that can, you know, create so many new opportunities for us career wise. So what is it that you could learn that would create a whole new set of opportunities for you? That's something you could be looking at 3rd of March. Don't worry if you're watching this after the 3rd of March. It doesn't matter. You know, it's this is good for whenever you watch this. So it's definitely a good time for you to take stock. What do I know? What would I like to know? And to plant seeds relating to some expansion to do with your intellect. It could even be learning a new language. You know, learning a new language opens up job opportunities for you in another country. So it's, it's pretty incredible what we can do with our minds. Now on the 18th of March, there is a Virgo full moon that's happening in Uttarafalguni Nakshatra in the fourth house. Okay, so this is interesting. This is a good time to reflect on your living space, on your home in a very practical way. Okay, so great time to take stock of, you know, what you have. Is this a time where you need to clear out your cupboards? It could be one of those things. This could be, or maybe you're preparing to do some spring cleaning. Whatever it is, there's something about you taking stock of your physical environment, of you getting organized in a very real and a very practical way. That would be a really good thing to do around the 18th of March. But Gemini, I am excited for this month for you. I'm excited for your ability to potentially take some rest. Okay, with that Mars transiting the eighth house there, this, this might be uh, a very good time to take some much earned rest. Do something restorative, do something nurturing and nourishing if you can. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now Mars is exalted all month in your seventh house. So this is an excellent transit to be building your social media profiles. If there are any of you who run YouTube channels or Instagram or whatever it is that you do and you have a following, maybe you're an author, maybe you're a musician and you have a following that way, whatever it is, this is a great time to up your subscriptions or your figures or whatever that is. I have noticed that when Mars, well, I, I noticed last year I had a massive spike in my viewing. So I had like you know, it was regularly, each monthly would get like 2,000 views or something. And then one month, I think it was July, I can't remember, one month, the spike, it just went up. It was like, boom, 15,000 for the month. I was like, what? It kind of freaked me out. I wasn't too happy about it, actually. I was like, oh no, because I like this small community. But um, but I, it, I wanted to see astrologically, what, what's going on? Why did it do that? My uh, Mars was third from the moon. So in, what I've noticed is Mars in an air house, Oh my gosh, it just like your ratings will go up. So uh, yeah, this, this could be good for you, Cancer. So if you run some kind of social media, look out for that. Um, this is great for career as well. You might feel quite energized to you know pursue things career-wise, to build something. This is also really good energy if you're doing a corporate career but you do a bit of moonlighting on the side, maybe you're a photographer or, or there's some dream business that you'd love to do full time, but you can't quite do it full time yet. And you're moonlighting, you're doing it on the side. This could even be good energy to put into your side business that you want to expand into being your main business. Okay, so this is, this is kind of good for that as well. I have the note here, not the best 
month to be with your partner. I know we've spoken about this, Cancer. I know we have spoken over the months. I, I think I even drew cards for you one time, especially. And um, I remember, I think you've been having, some of you might have been having a bit of a tough time in the love life department but know that that's gonna improve, okay? April onwards, you're gonna have a great couple of months. Then Venus is gonna enter Capricorn, I think. You're gonna have a little dip. And then you're gonna have many, many, many months of just sustained love life happiness, okay? So better times are coming when it comes to your love life, but this is not the month for, um, for that uh, at, at the moment. But don't worry, better energies are coming. Now, 3rd of March, Aquarius new moon, Satya Bishak nakshatra. This is happening in your eighth house. So you can plant seeds regarding your family, regarding shared assets as well. If you're dealing with some kind of situation where there's shared assets or family or anything like that, or maybe you want all of your family to come together or something like that, because you're all in different countries. Um, could be something like that. There's also the ability to wish for or plant seeds for healing abilities that you would like to tap within yourself. Or maybe there's occult gifts that you would like to open up or hone or experience more of. Okay, so this could be a really good uh, time on the 3rd of March to plant the seed for that. And honestly, don't worry if you're watching this after the 3rd of March, it's okay, you can still plant that seed anyway. Just have the intention. I'm doing this on the 3rd of March for the Aquarius new moon Satya Bishak. That's all, because time is an illusion anyway. I, sh I probably shouldn't talk too much about that. I'm an astrologer, time is my business. <laughs> but you know, hey, it's true. <laughs> now, 18th of March, Virgo full moon, uh, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your third house. Okay, so this is a beautiful full moon and this is a really good time to reflect about what's on your mind. This is this is this is a this is a really nice time as well to be meditating and doing that kind of activity as well. This could also be a really good time to have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation, to talk to someone who's close to you about about what's on your mind. You know, this could be a really good time to to share your emotions with someone you know but in an not in a way where you want something this is just you want to be listened to that it's that kind of it's that kind of sharing some kind of real authentic sharing uh with someone yeah i've got the note here this could be a good time for a down-to-earth conversation with a friend or someone you care about something like that so this is looking like a pretty good month, Cancer. I'm excited for, especially your Mars energy there in the seventh house and the ability to potentially be more seen uh, and more recognized this month for your work. That's really exciting. So thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now gonna welcome Leo. Leo, thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're about to run out of memory card here. I don't know what to do. I think I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna start a new video actually. Hi Leo, sorry about that. I just had to refresh the memory card, but we're all good now. So you've got Mars exalted all month in your sixth house. This is excellent. Oh, I'm so happy for you. You have got great energy to get ahead in your career. I know we keep talking about career for you, don't we Leo? I think it's because you've got Saturn in this house as well don't you let me just double check that yeah you do that's why we keep talking about career for you for the past couple of years now we have been talking about career but this, this is a big career time for you okay and you can really make some headway especially with this energy this month so i'm very excited for this uh, so great energy to get ahead in your career, great energy to win legal cases or settle some kind of dispute or surpass the competition in your field of work. You really do have the energy to go for what you want this month. Okay, so use that energy if you can, that would be great. Now on the 3rd of March, we have an Aquarius new moon in Satya Bishak Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So you can plant seeds regarding any travel that you'd like to do in the future. Where is it that you'd like to go? 
and this can be the kind of thing that really bears fruit perhaps you know when the whole world is a little bit better and safer to travel I still tend to think I know a lot of people are traveling a lot I know but I still tend to think uh, one should be cautious for a little while yet because we do have Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn they're transforming the airline industry the insurance industry all of that so um, but it's a good time to wish for where you would like to go in the future you could plant seeds to meet that special someone okay this is the seventh house if you're single and you want to meet someone and you want to get married one day or you know just create a beautiful partnership a beautiful commitment with someone you love wish for that what could be more important also your leo that would really matter to you as well so yes if you're single definitely plant a seed for someone that you'd love to meet and the other thing to do and especially when it comes to love energies i recently watched um, a talk by Eckhart Tolle and he was talking about conscious manifestation and he said those exercises they get you to do you know affirmations and planting seeds and doing all these things he says don't do them for more than a week or two and I, I'm gonna say just just do it for one day you know or just do it as you're watching this video right you, you don't have to do anything special just plant the seed he says and then let it go and let the universe do it he says do the exercises for a week or two but I, I don't even think you need to go to that length I think you can just wish for what it is you want you can journal it write it out and then let it go and it's that thing of when you plant a seed in the ground you don't keep digging it up to see well are you growing any shoots yet you don't do that you let it grow and that is the kind of thing that you can be doing around the 3rd of March so and if you're doing this after the 3rd of March it's perfectly fine you can do it anytime now on the 18th of March we have a full moon in Virgo this is Uttra Falguni Nakshatra this is happening in your second house so this is a great time to reflect on your family reflect on just just family life and especially this does apply to the singles actually because would you like to create your own family you know how it, this is a time of taking stock a time of looking at your family a time of looking how that has manifested what that is in your life and what you'd like it to be okay so it's a nice full moon to really be reflective on this concept of family and what it means to me it's also a really good time as well I do tend to think with a full moon this is a really nice time to tell someone how much they mean to you so this could be telling a close family member what they mean to you you know um, yeah a really lovely time to express how much you care you know if if you feel so inspired it's a good time it's a good time to express the fullness of your emotion to someone there on the 18th of March if you're feeling inspired so Leo I'm loving this Mars energy for you in your sixth house you're one of the lucky three signs that's getting an excellent transit like I can't fault this Mars energy it's really good so please do make the most of it this month and of course observe it observe in your life how it's how it's playing out and yeah see see how this energy works for you all right well we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo thank you so much for joining now Mars is exalted all month in your fifth house okay so this is this this could be a little bit tiring this energy this this might run you down a little bit sometimes so Mars in the eighth can run you down Mars here in the fifth can run you down energetically as well uh, it's also important to just keep an eye on your children's health too and you know just see that they are okay but you do have some really good energy to be creative okay if you are feeling energetic see if you can you can put that energy into your creativity into your creative projects into especially passion projects art something you want to express something you want to do you know those side projects there's things we have on the side that we're always trying to find time to do it's a really great month 
for you to actually sit down and do those things, you know, get the paints out or the, the I don't know, the, the jewellery tools and the bead boxes out. I have that in London. I have all my beads there and my jewellery tools that, anyway, one day, one day I'll get back there. Um, let's have a look here. Expenses could go up this month as well. Okay, so just take care with that. But it's, it's looking good for your creativity with the Mars energy there. Now, on the 3rd of March, we have an Aquarius new moon in Sattabishak Nakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So this is a great time to plant seeds regarding your career. How would you like your career to grow from here? You know, where you are now, perhaps maybe you do love what you're doing now but maybe you aspire for more. This is a good time to plant seeds for that. Maybe you absolutely cannot stand what you're doing now. So treat this where you are now if you absolutely can't stand it. Treat it as a stepping stone. And Louise Hay has this advice that bless this current stepping stone with love and bless your current job with love, you know, and, and recognize that, you know, when I move on from this position, someone else is going to really love this position that I have here and you know bless the stepping stone you're on with love the next thing will open up you know when you totally accept where you are that's very often when you're ready for the next thing you're ready to be challenged in a new way so you're ready that you're ready for the door to open and for there to be a new challenge which we don't always want challenges but that is kind of how that works. So, um, but yeah, definitely bless this stepping stone that you're on with love and do plant a seed on the 3rd of March for some progress or expansion in your career for it, you know, your career to grow in some direction that's going to bring more meaning into your life. You know, I think we're all searching for careers where there's more meaning. I think that's really the ultimate reward in life. So 18th of March, uh, we have a full moon in Virgo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra. So this is happening for you in your first house. This is a great time. Wow, this is your full moon, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really good time to reflect on your entire life. <coughs> Virgo, this is quite huge. And if you are in the habit of journaling, I might just take a sip of water. If you are in the habit of journaling, then around the 18th of March, it's a really good time to just reflect on <clears throat> how you feel about different areas of your life, you know, and just do that without any, you know, um, tension in the writing or I want to change this or I want this to be different. You can, you can, of course, write all of that down as well, but just see if you can reflect in a very pure and very practical way about your life this is a kind of taking stock of where your life is and just pinning it down putting it on paper just to reflect on and it's amazing sometimes in the act of writing what is things can crystallize and become clear and new ideas can come in and it, it's pretty amazing actually i had that experience just today i was writing an email to a client and this client had helped me to see something, an idea that I've actually had in my mind for many years. I, I had the feeling of it, but I, I never knew how to put it into words. And yeah, this Virgo full moon, this Uttra Falguni, this kind of Virgo Uttra Falguni energy, this is very practical, very grounded, very just, you know, earthy, 3D. We're just gonna put it in words. Great time to reflect on your entire life. That's that's quite a task. So if you're up for it, Virgo, you can definitely journal about the state of your life just as it is as an exercise. But I'm really liking the look of this Mars transiting your fifth house because it's going to give you hopefully uh, some energy, you know, some real world physical energy to pick up the paintbrush, to get moving on something you know it's it's got some doing energy about it and it will help you be more creative so thank you so much for tuning in virgo and we are now going to welcome libra 
Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now Mars is exalted all month in your fourth house. So it's an interesting one. We have exalted Mars. Yet I'm going to say it's, it's not the best month to be buying property or to be having things to do with property, even though it is an exalted energy, but it's a strong Mars energy. Okay, so what I would say here is if you are moving or having something to do with property, take extra care, okay, because you might feel this, there's this really strong energy. I always tend to, when I do consultations and some of you are moving and things like that, if I see Mars going through the fourth, I'll sort of say maybe avoid that period for moving or buying property. Um, and it's not too long, it's, it's just till early April, you know. So just take extra care if you're having to move or having something to do with your property. But if you can avoid it, if you can reschedule it to April onwards, that's even better. Be careful with how you speak, especially to your family members, especially to your mother. Okay, and this is a month where you do want to look out for your mother, especially if her health, you know, is, isn't so great. This is a month to give her extra energy to, to really look after her. This could be some good energy for work as well. So if you're looking for how to channel this energy, if you're feeling extra energy this month, then you can channel it into your work, but just also take care how you speak to seniors at work as well, or just, yeah, don't, don't put your foot on the accelerator too much kind of thing. You might also be a little bit run down. You could be a bit tired as well. The 3rd of March, we've got an Aquarius new moon in Sattva Bishak Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So you can plant seeds regarding your creativity. Okay. Um, I have the note here, see yourself shining in the profession of your dreams or that your art is finally being recognized. Okay. This is also an excellent time on the 3rd of March if you are, you know, in a relationship or you want to have a baby, any of that kind of thing, great time to wish for a baby, okay? If you want to expand your family, if you want to fall pregnant, any of that, 3rd of March is a really great time to do that. Don't worry if you're watching this after the 3rd of March, it's perfectly fine, you know, as long as you just hold the intention uh, in your mind. And as Eckhart Tolle explains, when you're consciously manifesting, you know, you can put the wish out there, but then don't keep wishing for it. Let it go. Let the universe make it happen. Let the universe deliver to you. You know, it's that thing of we don't keep digging up the seed to check on its growth. It's that kind of thing. Now, on the 18th of March, we have a Virgo full moon this is happening in Uttara Falguni Nakshatra, 12th house for you. So this is a really great time to, re to reflect on your spiritual self, to observe and see what cycles are coming full circle in your life. This is really interesting. Can you spot a big spiritual cycle coming to a close? And do you know, I, I have done this um, Regardless of astrology, there was a time when I was working for someone in London and she took me out for dinner at this place in this beautiful leafy suburb in North London and uh, we had a great time. I was living there at the time, but then I moved and she moved, country even, and we were all in all different places. Anyway, some years later, we ended up doing some work together and we were nowhere near that suburb in North London. But what happened was when we finished the project we were on, she took me for a meal at that same restaurant in North London. And I think six years had passed. And for me, that was the end of a cycle. I, and I felt like I had completed some really big karma with her as well. It was pretty amazing. And I remember we're sitting there having this dinner and I'm kind of tripped out because I'm like, neither of us live here and yet we're both back in this same place where she 
took me out for dinner yeah many years ago it was really weird anyway I just thought I'd share that to say yeah isn't it great to observe the closing of cycles like and I didn't know because it was just when we met and had that original dinner I didn't know that it was going to be like I had no idea what you know that was going to be so observe that on the 18th of March Virgo full moon Uttra Falguni Nakshatra 12th house observe the cycles that are closing and opening even can you see and can you identify and see what might be closing for you at this time are you closing a cycle on the 18th of March yeah it's really interesting that whole opening and closing of cycles I love all that well Libra I'm excited for this energy for you what's the most exciting here I think I think the new moon and full moon energies are pretty exciting I think I think the Mars energy might be tiring you out a little bit you might want to check on your maybe your Sun your moon your ascendant whichever one you're here for go and go and check out another one because it feels like you might have a better Mars transit somewhere else so do take a look at that Libra but thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining now Mars is exalted all month in your third house wonderful you are one of the lucky ones you're one of the lucky three of the 12 signs which is having an excellent Mars transit that I, I can't fault this energy this is brilliant brilliant energy so this is a great transit to be seen this is a great transit to be recognized by your peers to be recognized at work if you run social media this is the transit this is the one I was just explaining to another sign who's also getting some similar energy to yours I was explaining how last year I there was a video I was, I was doing my monthlies and they were all getting like 2,000 views something like that and then one month boom one of them got 15,000 views I was just like what it was the most bizarre thing and I looked at the planets what was going on that month and it turns out Mars was transiting third from my moon so you've got that transit now so if you're running a social media platform this is the month for you to really you know be seen and excel and do well so I'm really excited for you for that great time to get your CV out great time to look for new jobs great time to go for new clients uh, during this transit yeah I I had a jump in followers so yeah who knows um, third of March so this is you're one of the lucky ones great transit now third of March there's a new moon happening in Aquarius Satyabhishak Nakshatra in your fourth house so you can plant a seed regarding your home is this something you would like to upgrade in your home maybe you want to do a renovation maybe you want a new home maybe you want to move this is a great time to plant a seed for that and when you plant a seed as Eckhart Tolle explains let it go plant the seed and then just let it go okay don't keep checking on it just trust that the universe is going to make it happen for you now on the 18th of March we have a full moon in Virgo Uttra Falguni Nakshatra this is happening for you in your 11th house so this is a great time to take stock of your material world take stock as well of how you welcome new opportunities into your life take stock of you know what are the things that you do to create new opportunities I think a few signs ago I was talking about the fact that you could learn a language and that could open up a whole new world of opportunities a whole you know new country to be in to travel to to do business with it's that kind of thing what are the things that you have done in the past to bring in yeah new opportunities how do you welcome new opportunities this is something really good to reflect on to journal about and to explore okay and that's all you have to do you don't have to actually do anything this is just a full moon energy this is just for reflection this is just big beautiful full moonlight for you to see this area of your life for you to see in detail how you bring new opportunities into your life okay take a look at that and um, and through the looking at that you will be inspired with new ideas 
as to how to expand further down the line. So Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to check on the time. We're good. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> I've got time. Now, Mars is exalted all month in your second house. Okay. This is interesting. You might feel very driven to organize your finances, to, you know, even I'm just, I'm just hearing, even set up a savings plan. There we go. Somebody out there might need to do that. This is that kind of energy where yeah you might just feel an impulse that I've been neglecting my finances this month I really need to sit down and I really need to take a look at this area of my life um, be careful not to spend too much this so this energy could manifest in that way where you're getting organized but it could also manifest in a way where you spend too much okay so it, it can manifest in that way be careful of that also be careful of how you speak with family or how you speak with people around you or people really close to you. And if you're feeling the aggressive side of Mars, you can exercise um, or you can channel it through your creativity. These are good ways to, you know, just transmute and transform that aggression energy into something practical, into something useful. I've got the note here, if you're feeling depleted, heed this and rest. Mars energy in this place, Mars, you know, in, in certain areas and yeah, it can be definitely in the first house, Mars can be, we're here in the second house here, yeah, Mars can be draining here. Mars in the eighth can be draining. Mars in the fifth, I was just, you know, with the people in the fifth there, that could be draining there, even the twelfth that can be draining. It's kind of interesting. So just, um, Take it easy if you are, yeah, if you're feeling depleted or drained or tired or there can be fluctuations in energy. The other thing is that we're going to have, so we're going to have a Rahu Ketu axis shift and we've got Uranus. So North Node is going to be hanging out with Uranus. So there's going to be energy shifts there. And then we've got this exalted Mars. So it, it is energetically a bit of a full on month this month. Now the 3rd of March. We have an Aquarius new moon, Satya Bishak, happening in your third house. This is a really great time to plant seeds for clarity of mind. Now I know with the third house, I typically go for things like courage to do new things. Okay, but this time I'm going to go for a clear and focused mind. That is going to be a really great thing to plant seeds for, um, especially with some of the things that you have, you know, coming up. And especially some of the creative things that I'm sure you'll be engaged in. I'm pretty sure your Rahu Ketu axis, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was all about creativity. So yeah, this is a really good time to plant seeds for a very clear, still focused mind so that great ideas can come in and you can be very inspired for all the creative work that you're going to do. Now on the 18th of March, we have a Virgo full moon that's happening in Uttara Falguni Nakshatra in your 10th house. So this is a really great time to reflect on your career. Are you where you want to be? You know, um, what changes do you need to make to get to the place where you would like to be career wise? You know, and yeah, I always think that it's important to to invest a bit of time it's you know it's even worth taking a little bit of time out from what you do to strategize to plan to think ahead so this 18th March Virgo full moon this is offering you a really great opportunity to just reflect on your career and really give it some time really take stock of where you are and visualize and think about where you would like to be That'll be a great thing to do uh, this month, Sagittarius. But I'm liking the look of the energies here, especially, you know, with the 3rd of March and the 18th of March, the, the new moon there and the Virgo full moon. That's all sitting really nicely with your Rahu Ketu axis shift that you've got going on. So thank you so much for tuning in, Sagittarius. And we are now going to welcome 
Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now Mars is exalted all month in your first house. So this is big energy. This is really strong energy on your first house, first house of physical body. Okay. Uh, that is if we're looking from the ascendant here, right? You might either feel energized you might feel drained. You might. It, it could go either way with this Mars energy. Okay, so this is one you're going to have to observe and see how is this working out for me. So just just see how that is. I've got the note here. Rest if you need to. This is not the ideal month to be starting a new business or some kind of brand new project. You might want to do that if you can postpone it. Don't worry if you can't, it's okay, but if you can, um, April onwards, if you have the flexibility to choose, you know you're going to have better energies later on. Definitely be careful how you speak to family members, especially your mother, okay, that's going to be important. Mother's health could also be impacted, so you might want to look after her or nurture her a little bit more if you can through doing. Okay, it's Mars energy. All you have to do is just do stuff. You don't have to, that's the, this is the thing, that's the beauty of Mars energy, right? You know, in, in these mini reports when I say things like, be careful how you speak to someone. Yeah, be careful how you speak to someone and you, don't speak, just do stuff. Do stuff that you know that those people will appreciate because you've got this Mars energy to do that. So yeah, it's, it's, this is a good time to be taking care of the family members, be taking care of your mother you know, and um, Mars is a planet of few words. You don't have to say much. Expenses could be higher this month as well. Yeah, Mars in the first, it's not the best transit. I will say that, guys. And you are, I know you're going through tough stuff at the moment with your Sadi Sati. Hang in there, Capricorn. We've only just got another year of this Capricorn transit to go. We're going to make it. Look, we're already at March. Okay, so this is flying. This is moving. You know, we, we're going to get through this. You guys are the champions of the zodiac. You know it. You know, the, the Capricorn moons out there. I'm speaking to the Sati Sati people. All right, so now on the 3rd of March, we've got Aquarius, new moon in Satya Bishak, Nakshatra, is happening in your second house. So you can plant seeds for big wealth. Okay, if you want the big money, to land. If you want to welcome in some big money into your life, it's a good time to wish for that. Um, and or you could wish for something related to your family. Maybe your family, you're all overseas in different locations, you want to be together. It's a great time to wish for that kind of thing. And don't worry if you're watching this after the 3rd of March, you can do this at any time, okay? It's just intention. It's just what you want. And Eckhart Tolle talks about the fact that, you know, when you wish for something, put out the wish, and then let it go. You know, don't, don't work too hard at the asking part. Ask once and trust that it's gonna come back. Uh, now, 18th of March, we've got a Virgo full moon, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra. For you, this is happening in your ninth house. There's a great time to review what you know. Okay, take stock of your mind. Hi Capricorn, sorry the camera got cut there, but great time to take stock of your mind. Great time to review what it is that you know. Isn't that an interesting activity? How often do we do that? How often do we reflect on what it is that we know? But hopefully you'll be able to do some big picture thinking here and kind of step back and just reflect on what it is that you know. And in the process of doing that, you'll be able to contemplate and think about what you would like to know more about, what skills you would like to build in, what you would hope to become more knowledgeable about because as you expand your intellect and you expand what you know, <clears throat> your opportunities in life increase and you know, you'll be able to do more things, connect with more people. You'll grow that way. So it's a really lovely full moon. It's a very practical full, full moon, very grounded, practical full moon. We're kind of getting real about things. You're getting real about where you're at. You could also reflect on your career as well. That would be a good thing for you to do. So Capricorn, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. 
Now Mars is exalted all month in your 12th house. So you might find this month it is difficult to sleep, okay? <clears throat> Anytime we have significant planetary energy moving through our 12th house, it can really challenge us sleep-wise. I have been noticing that happening for me. Now that I do this work, I can, sometimes I take a look, sometimes I don't, I just, I just live life. But um, I have been noticing that, yeah, when planets are going through my 12th house, my sleep does change a little bit. One thing I have definitely noticed is that when there's a full moon, I find it hard to sleep. That thing I've been noticing for a while anyway, did I notice it before I was doing this work? Not really, no, I think it is as a result of this work, but because I'm always observing, yeah, the new moon, the full moon, all this, um, yeah, I notice that I find it hard to sleep on a full moon. I'm great on a new moon. Oh, I get good sleep there, really good. Anyway, yes, you might find it's difficult to sleep. You might also find that there are body aches and pains, might be a bit more inflammation, that kind of thing. I always get sort of pain around my shoulders and things like that. Um, could be a good time to do some light yoga. One of the things I've been enjoying, I said this in another sign, I've been really enjoying yoga with Adrienne. I've mentioned her on the channel before, she's so amazing, but I have gone back to her recently and I am doing the bedtime yoga routine. So just before I sleep, I do, there's this really lovely light. It's like 20 minutes, it's not that long. It's really easy to do. And I've been doing that just before I sleep. And it's a really nice, gentle way of getting some relaxation. It's both relaxation and it's it's some light exercise too. It's really good. So this might be a good month for you. This might be a really good month for you, you know, to incorporate something like that into your daily routine. You could even take a retreat. You, you might even feel that you're able to take a little retreat, a little getaway somewhere. That could be a good thing for you, but if you are traveling, do take extra care, okay? Uh, because, you know, we do have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, transforming travel, airline industry, insurance, all that. So take extra care if you travel. Do also take extra care in your relationship with your spouse, okay? Uh, be careful what you say to your spouse. And because this is Mars energy, this is action energy. So show your love through actions. You know, you'll be able to do that really easily here, I think with Mars in the 12th. Um, yeah. Now we've got an Aquarius new moon in Sat the Bishak happening on the 3rd of March. This is happening for you in your first house. So you can plant seeds for any major changes that you'd like to see on your life path. Are you happy with your life path? Are you happy with the direction of your life and where you're going? This is a really great time to plant a seed for a change. You know, if you want a career change or if the way you live, there's something about the way you live that you're like, I just can't keep doing this anymore. Or, you know, maybe you want to change something about your family life or it could be any area. So this is a really great time to plant a seed for something that really matters to you and that's going to have an impact on your life path. So it's a great time to plant a seed. And don't worry if you're watching this after 3rd of March, you can do this anytime. Eckhart Tolle talks about conscious manifestation. He says that, you know, once you've planted the seed, let it go. Let the wish go. Let the universe and trust that the universe is going to make it happen and bring it back to you. Okay. That's what you've got to do here. Now on the 18th of March, we have a Virgo full moon, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra. This is your eighth house. So this is a great time to review your relationships with your family uh, in terms of dependence and independence. Okay, are you dependent on your family in some way? And what changes would you like to make in the future? That will occur to you naturally, but this is just a good time to reflect. This is just a good time to see, you know, sometimes we're too independent. You know, sometimes we really need to be around people and sometimes we're with people and we're too close, you know, or we're dependent in some way that's unhealthy. So on the 18th of March, this Virgo full moon, you're gonna have this bright, beautiful moonlight that's gonna light up what's really going on. You might be able to see 
some more patterns or dynamics in your relationships with your family and especially in relation to dependence and independence you should be able to see something might be illuminated for you in that area so Aquarius incredible energy uh, I'm liking it actually I'm liking your Mars in the 12th as well especially if you channel that into things like light yoga or even some martial arts or something like that I have been studying Bruce Lee he should be coming on the masters series I don't know when I'm, I'm working on it but you know he had his Mars in the 12th and he was quite a martial artist so um, yeah I hope you enjoy this month ahead Aquarius and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining now Mars is exalted all month in your 11th house wow this is excellent Pisces winner winner chicken dinner you have got the transit of the zodiac basically three signs are getting a really good a kind of faultless Mars transit that I can't fault okay and you're one of the lucky ones so you're gonna have the energy you're gonna have the energy to go for the big opportunities you're gonna have the energy maybe to put yourself out there to go for a new job to go for a promotion to to try for things you know this could be um, a major uplift in your social media as well you might discover a real spike in your followers or subscribers or your views or whatever it is that you're running whatever platforms you run um, great time to win new clients great time to be rewarded for all the effort that you've put in okay so I'm excited for you this month Pisces I'm really excited on the 3rd of March there's an Aquarius new moon in Satya Bishak Nakshatra happening in your 12th house this is a great time to plant for seeds to wish for heightened awareness or for your spiritual gifts to open up more maybe there's something that you've always wanted to know maybe there's some secretive thing that you've always wanted to figure out or know you could even plant a wish that you get to find out you know um, it could also be a time we have a new moon here in the 12th house you might be more psychic than usual okay Pisces you're always a little bit psychic anyway but uh, you might be a bit more psychic than usual so keep a dream journal uh, around the 3rd of March or even a small notepad to jot ideas or insights especially if you're a creative person if you're a writer you use your imagination that kind of thing your imagination might really be on fire in the early part of March there now on the 18th of March we have a Virgo full moon Uttra Falguni Nakshatra this is happening in your seventh house this is a great time to review your relationship with your spouse actually if you're married um, or just in general to review your partnerships with other people perhaps your business partnerships uh, or you could be reviewing your love life just as a whole you know um, what's working for you what's not working for you we have a big beautiful full moon here that's offering a lot of illumination a lot of extra light for you to reflect on you know the state of your love life the state of your business the state of your partnerships your relationships with other people so something might be illuminated some dynamic or pattern you might get to see or understand something in in quite a full way so it's some really nice energy there that you've got Pisces your Mars transit absolutely incredible I'm so excited for your month ahead I really hope uh, this energy brings you some form of uplift some excitement some opportunities some abundance gosh wouldn't that be nice so Pisces thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to anyone who has joined us for the whole video and, and watched the whole video it's always great to have you guys here thank you so much for all the participation on the channel as well for all of your comments all of your likes everything I'm just loving doing this channel so thank you so much everyone and I look forward to seeing you next time